Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the CalRecycle public meeting today. Um, I'm Ken DeRosa, Chief Deputy Director of CalRecycle. If you haven't tuned in for a while, today's monthly public meeting may look a little different for you. We've been working to serve the public better with communication that is accessible, inclusive, uses plain language, and is as relevant as possible. Today's meeting will include a structured format, the goal of setting a context for the critical work CalRecycle does, that many of you do, and to make important announcements. Thank you to those who've provided feedback uh, over the course of the last couple months uh, with this change in format, and we continue to welcome uh, your feedback for this platform. Today, you'll see a more visual PowerPoint, a couple of videos produced by CalRecycle's Public Affairs Office, and a new host and facilitator, uh, Linda Muma. So I'm going to now turn it to Linda to take over for uh, facilitating and hosting the meeting. And let's get started. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Ken, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Before we get started, a quick mention to those who wish to submit questions and comments on an agenda item this morning to please send them to the public comments portal. You can find the portal on the CalRecycle homepage. Just click on public meeting in the left-hand column. In the text near the bottom of the page, click Public Comment Portal. And then from the drop down menu, select the first option, Monthly Public Meeting, to type your name, your email address, subject, or agenda item, and submit your question or comment. We ask that you please uh, keep them brief and make sure to indicate which agenda item you are referring to so that we can direct them to the appropriate person for a response. And we will address your comments during the public comment period a little later this morning. Our first agenda item today is the director's report. So let's check in with CalRecycle Director Rachel Monkey wagner for a couple of announcements this morning and updates on the state budget, funding for pilot programs, and some new innovations to develop a circular economy. Good morning, Rachel. Excellent. Thank you so much, Linda. It is so wonderful to see you this morning and to be with all of you this morning. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of your day and to um, participate uh, with us as, um, uh, as part of our monthly meeting. Um, as we look forward to the coming year, CalRecycle has been given the opportunity to help California recover stronger and more resilient. The legislature and governor have provided us with some additional tools and resources that will help us be a part of that recovery and really strengthen the programs here at CalRecycle um, as we serve the state. Um, the first that I wanted to highlight were the additional um, positions that we received for um, AB 1383 implementation that will help us uh, with the realignment um, of our staff and the full implementation of a very strong organics recycling and recovery program. We are very excited to have the opportunity to hire some additional staff as well as move some of our existing staff um, as those of you who follow the budget project uh, budget process, excuse me, know we are working very hard to make that program very strong here at Cal Recycle. The second that I wanted to highlight were the additional positions that we received um, for debris removal. Again, very similarly to our AB 18, uh, 1383 implementation, um, we are looking at ways to really heighten and strengthen our debris removal program um, and really make our program better for uh, the people that we are helping uh, recover from devastating wildfires. Uh, so uh, very excited to announce that we have additional positions there as well. Um, we also have a couple of opportunities, um, not only to realign and augment our staff, but we are building some new reorganization plans into CalRecycle. I'm very, very excited to announce the creation of a regulations office within our legal division. Um, we have really built this or are, are working to build this as a strengthening CalRecycle's regulatory process and really supporting all of the regulations that we are developing, amending and implementing so that for our stakeholders from local governments to uh, regulated entities that we are truly, truly providing consistency 
and strength in our regulatory process. So very excited that we will be building the Office of Regulation. Um, and um, last but not least, as part of our reorg um, overview, we are building a new Office of Innovation. Um, I am so incredibly excited about this as well. Um, this is really something that we have taken in input from many stakeholders across the state um, and from the legislature to say, we recognize that part of our mandate and part of our mission is really to help support those businesses that are helping California recycle and remanufacture recycled products in a way that works for our environment, for the people and communities of the state of California. And so um, Matt, um, in Matt Hennigan's division, um, we will be building this Office of Innovation and really consolidating a lot of the work that's already happening within the division around how do we best think about and help foster innovation in recycling and remanufacturing. Additionally, and very excitingly, um, many of you are familiar with the pilot projects that we have um, begun to implement or support across California. Um, uh, in the uh, beverage recycling program. Um, we have been authorized to uh, support five additional uh, recycling uh, pilot projects for beverage containers across the state and have been given an additional $10 million to support that effort and the existing efforts um, that are there. And I am incredibly excited about this opportunity because I think that what we are seeing within the beverage container recycling world is that there are some new technologies and new ideas that we should really explore to see if they can really help the state of California increase access to redemption and increase our recycling efforts. This has um, been a long-standing stewardship program here within the state of California. And for 35 years, we've really led in this area, but it is time for us to look at some new ideas and how we can really help this program and help this effort succeed for the state of California. And so with that, I'd like to um, turn it back over to Linda to play uh, our video about um, our current pilot projects and where we're going. Sort them, separate them, and make an appointment to recycle beverage containers right from your driveway or doorstep. It's innovative, it's creative, and we believe it'll create more recycling opportunities for our residents. That's the idea behind RecycleFromHome.com, a new online residential recycling pickup program making it easier for families in Irvine to get their California Redemption Value deposit back on bottles and cans. It hasn't been tried before and there hasn't been any programs like this in the state. The program is one of five approved California pilot projects funded by CalRecycle to boost access to recycling in underserved communities. No longer bound by the old rules for recycling, locally run pilot programs are free to explore new methods for more convenient redemption. The recycler comes to you instead of you going to the recycler. A customized redemption program to meet local needs, providing easy options for Irvine residents and removing burdens for local businesses. This innovative pilot project makes recycling in Irvine even simpler, and I encourage all Irvine residents to sign up for the service at RecycleFromHome.com. In Culver City, SoCal Recycling is also operating a first-of-its-kind recycling program to make it easier for residents to recycle. It's always very clean, you know, there's not clutter all around, a little shade if I need it. The pilot project features mobile redemption centers that alternate between different locations on different days. This is way more convenient, I can walk up, I don't have to line up forever and ever. Customers don't even have to get out of their car, just separate the recyclables prior to arrival, place them in the trunk, and a recycling technician can take the bags, weigh them, and then pay you on the spot for your bottles and cans. This program allows our residents to participate in California's CRV program in a convenient way and helps some of our most vulnerable communities who rely on programs like this for cash. Other pilot projects in San Mateo County communities near Menlo Park, in Daly City and Half Moon Bay added three additional fixed CRV take-back locations 
with more limited hours than traditional recycling centers a more cost-effective method for redemption in rural areas. Our population in Half Moon Bay is about 13,000, so we're not huge. But residents here haven't had a recycling center for years, forcing some to drive long distances to redeem their bottles and cans. They either had to take it, you know, 30 minutes across the hill to San Mateo, or they had to go up to Daly City. Now, J&D Recycling is using 20-foot metal shipping containers like this one in convenient locations like shopping centers. The location is ideal because they can see it coming into one of our largest and only shopping centers in Half Moon Bay, um, whereas the old recycling center used to be tucked away, so people didn't feel as comfortable using it. As well as Mini Mart parking lots. This is probably like the tiniest place that you could put a recycling center, and it's working out perfectly. Now that the pilot program allows more flexibility on where and when recycling centers can operate. It's so important that there is is access and by providing a local and convenient opportunity for our residents to supplement their income while doing their part to help the environment just makes sense. Customers pull their car right in and give their pre-sorted bags to a technician who then takes and inspects the material. Everything had to be properly labeled as a California CRV message on it. The material is then placed in bins and weighed on a mobile scale. The best part is customers are paid in cash right on site making it easier for families to recycle their empty containers. Finding this has been, it made it a lot easier, so I've been doing once a month run. The program is giving communities the chance to overcome local challenges, like high real estate costs, limited parking, and neighborhood opposition to new CRV take-back sites. I think this is a great pilot project. It's been hugely successful just in terms of the collaboration between all the different partners and all the moving pieces. Uh, we're extremely fortunate and happy that things have come together the way that they have. Some pilot projects are so successful, community leaders are looking into expanding hours and adding locations, showing Californians where this innovation may lead. As you can tell, there are so many exciting things going on with the pilot projects here in California. And while many of them are just getting up and running, um, they really took the opportunity over the time that we were um, um, closed down as a state during the pandemic, local governments were working hard to really explore and work with partners within their communities to to truly explore some of the alternative ideas. So we are very excited in the coming year to watch these pilot projects unroll, watch how they um, work within their communities and various stakeholders. And we are incredibly excited to come back and talk to you all about it in the coming months um, as we see how they work. And we're even more excited because we get an opportunity to work with five additional regions or communities and stakeholders to explore even additional ideas. So at this point, I really just want to encourage stakeholders and um, local jurisdictions who are participating today, if you are interested in um, conducting a pilot project in the beverage container program, please reach out to us. Those grant applications will um, be available soon, but we would love to be um, helpful to you in figuring out what makes most sense for your community and how uh, we can work together to increase access to the beverage container recycling um, program and increase innovation in this uh, area. So please reach out to us if you are interested in participating um, or would like help in building. And we will, in the coming weeks, um, be um, opening up grant applications um, um, to participate in the five additional pilot projects. So with that, Thank you all very much. Look forward to a robust discussion today. Uh, back to you, Linda. Thank you so much, Rachel. And in addition to the to authorizing the five new pilot projects that you had mentioned, the budget extended the sunset date for pilot projects to December 31st, 2025. Chief Deputy Director Ken DeRosa is back now with more on the approved pilot projects that are just coming online. Ken. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. A terrific video. So we have a couple more that are um, rolling out or about to begin. Um, San Francisco 
uh, is uh, rolling out its pilot program. Started about a week ago with a, uh, a, a buyback style recycling center. And you saw a similar model to this in, in the video. Um, that center is uh, operating um, taking in smaller loads um, under the authority of the, of the pilot project. It's being run by Our Planet Recycling, and um, what they have uh, told us thus far is that they have another site within the region, and opening this, this second site, albeit a smaller load, has allowed some convenience for those customers because they're able to bring, those who are bringing smaller loads are able to go to this alternate site, and it's uh, reduced the lines at the at the uh, at the uh, more traditional site um san francisco's is a multifaceted project it will also include a backdrop component with a blend of fixed locations and also mobile backdrop backdrop where uh, individuals can uh, know where vehicles will be coming to pick up their bags sonoma county um, which will include uh, santa rosa petaluma sonoma sebastopol healdsburg and cloverdale is also working on a bag drop program uh, with fixed locations and that expects to become operational in the coming weeks the san francisco bag drop program that i mentioned um, should be coming online sometime next month so that it provides us where we are with the uh, pilot projects. Thus far, the feedback has been very positive uh, from the operators as well as the community members. You saw, again, some of that in the video. So we're very uh, enthusiastic about how these are going and, and very enthusiastic about those that are forthcoming. At this point, I'd like to uh, share an update um, regarding the beverage container certification uh, program and its components. Um, the convenience zone numbers that you see here have remained fairly static over the last year. So we don't see much change in the, in the statewide numbers this year over last. However, uh, there have been determinations made on hold zones. Those are the ones that we are evaluating um, in terms of uh, indicating if there are within exempt zones, unserved zones, or if there's another recycling center uh, that can cover the zones. And so we've been able to really catch up on that work. And as you can see on the chart here, as of June 30th, 21, uh, we have uh, one additional one that we are holding uh, for review and further examination to determine its, its disposition. Uh, the next slide, please. This reflects our uh, option A and option B dealers. And that option A number has increased uh, from this time last year. These are numbers that can change daily. And so again, I will point to the fact that this is June 30th of, of this year. And this is partially a result, the numbers that you see here, um, this is a partial result of convenience zones previously designated as hold zones being determined as served, unserved, or exempt. So this is always a, a dynamic number, and we will continue to uh, update stakeholders and, and our um, interested community in these, um, in these changes. If we could pivot to the next slide, please. Thank you. This is an interesting um, slide that uh, would really like to call everyone's attention to, especially as you compare year over year from June 20th to June, excuse me, June 2020 to June 2021. You'll see that the number of claims paid has increased, the total amount paid out has increased, and the average per claim has increased. Um, we're speculating that this is a result of as things have relaxed and people have come out from, from the, the pandemic, we're starting to see more material coming to the recycling centers. And so this is a very good trend uh, that, we are, that we are seeing. Uh, next slide, please. This is also a trend that sort of reflects somewhat um, the, the pandemic. As, facility, as bars and others closed, there was an opportunity for them to do more of uh, more with manufacturers in terms of selling their products via a retail outlet such as such as their restaurant or their bar and so we've seen a modest uptick in the number of registered beverage manufacturers and distributors uh, compliments to the staff were working to identify those that began bottling uh, crv crv beverages and so a slight trend upward this too is a very dynamic number but we believe that um, you know, for the first time during the pandemic and, and the result in outreach to get these in, into these registered has been very helpful in bringing these numbers forward. 
The next slide is our disbursement programs. This one we've seen um, some decline in both uh, processors and recycling centers and drop-off programs and community service programs. Curbside has increased somewhat. Um, there's been a steady stream of applications um, and pre-certification trainees. However, operational programs, they have dipped slightly uh, from this time last year. And this too may be attributable to uh, the challenges during COVID last year. But along those same lines, we do want to indicate for those who are interested in getting involved in the recycling program that we do have some training opportunities forthcoming. Uh, there are some pre-certification training classes that are scheduled, uh, one including this week, and we are offering this, um, we're offering um, virtual courses uh, several times per month, and we are beginning to offer in-person courses once a month, alternating between Northern California and Southern California. It's important that if you are interested in these to um, stay in touch with us and monitor um, as things are fluid, we are, um, we are planning to have them in person, but circumstances may change. And so we may need to pivot um, for those that are uh, in person planned in person um, to a virtual platform. But there's been uh, increasing interest in getting involved in this. And so if you are, please reach out to us. There is a contact uh, link um, here on the website. You can also reach out to the department directly to uh, learn more about when these are offered and where they are offered. And that does it for me with regard to uh, certification and the beverage container program. Thank you everyone for your time. Thank you so much, Ken. As a reminder, if you'd like to submit a question or a comment on an agenda item, please do so through the public comments portal. You can see the instructions on your screen. From the CalRecycle homepage, select public meeting. In the text, click on public meeting portal. And in the drop down menu, select monthly public meeting. Make sure to include your name, your email address, and the subject or agenda item you are referring to. Also, please keep your submissions brief and make sure to indicate again, which item you are addressing so that we can direct it to the appropriate person to get you an answer. And we'll address your comments and your questions coming up a little bit later. Now to an update on wildfire disaster recovery operations. CalRecycle and all of its partner agencies just reached a major milestone in the statewide cleanup program. Deputy Director Tina Walker has more on that coming up in just a minute, but first let's take a closer look at how more frequent and damaging wildfires are impacting California and our state's fight against climate change. California is in a climate crisis. Look, the hots are getting hotter, the dries are getting drier. We're standing on dry grass and we should be standing in five feet of snow. I'm standing currently 40 feet underwater or should be. Warmer weather and devastating drought are fueling more frequent fires the season is now longer and more intense than ever before. Right now, the state's wildfires are outpacing last year's record-breaking season, and one is currently approaching the burn scar of the campfire where survivors are working to rebuild. Because it's taken that first instant of joy that you would see in a sunrise or a sunset and turned it into a little bit of a trigger based on what I saw that morning of the glow with, with the ash. Five of the 10 largest wildfires in state history happened in 2020, when over 4 million acres burned an area as large as Los Angeles, Orange, and Ventura counties combined. A rarity just a few decades ago, deadly and destructive wildfires have become California's new normal. If you are in denial about climate change, come to California. In 2007, the state first called on CalRecycle to help manage an El Dorado County wildfire cleanup before contaminated runoff could reach Lake Tahoe. Since then, wildfire cleanups have gotten bigger and much more frequent. CalRecycle is cleaning up wildfires and taking on the climate crisis. Coordinating with local, state, and federal partners, the department has led the cleanup of over 21,000 properties across 28 counties. This includes the 2018 campfire in Paradise, still the deadliest and most destructive wildfire in California history. Also, the record-breaking 2020 wildfire season, which spanned 25 counties across the state. 
when I first started doing the, these debris cleanups 10 years ago, it would be isolated to individual neighborhoods. And this last fire over in Paradise, it was neighborhood after neighborhood after neighborhood. And then it started going to the whole town. And then it, would, it started encompassing the whole uh, region. It's not just one home or, and, and going over multiple properties over and over and over and seeing just the, the tragedy, um, the, the amount of devastation and the things that have completely gone. Once largely staffed by CalRecycle employees from other programs volunteering to temporarily work on fire projects, the wildfire cleanup program has evolved to become a major function of the department. In 2019, CalRecycle's Emergency Disaster Recovery Office was established to oversee wildfire cleanups year round. It's hard to imagine what we need to do in the future to prevent forest fires. And I just hope that one day we can put this behind us. With most of the state in extreme drought and an abundance of dry vegetation that's already catching fire again this year, California is working to address the root cause of climate change and help prevent future climate disasters. With our partners across state government, CalRecycle has been called to the front lines of California's climate crisis. While Cal Fire and Cal OES work hard to prevent future wildfires, CalRecycle is committed to continuing to help our communities recover and rebuild. At the same time, we are doing our part in the fight to take on one of the top climate pollutants by reducing food, yard, and other organic waste statewide. Moving California toward a future with less climate pollution, more green jobs, and fewer fires. And as California braces for peak fire season, the most extensive post-fire cleanup in state history is nearly complete. Deputy Director for Debris Recovery, Tina Walker, has a progress report for us this morning. Good morning, Tina. Good morning. On Friday, July 9th, CalRecycle contractors met a major milestone in recovery efforts following the devastating 2018 campfire with the felling of the last of 38,000 hazard trees in the town of Paradise. This is a significant accomplishment for the state, local partners, and those looking forward to rebuilding in this community. The campfire hazard tree removal operation was a first of its kind operation for the CalRecycle team and we look forward to completing the continued hazard tree felling efforts in unincorporated Butte County in the coming weeks. The statewide debris operations following last year's statewide wildfire siege is nearing completion as well. Of the 3,380 properties enrolled in the state program, 98% are now clear of structural debris Hazard tree removal operations continue, and to date, nearly 38% of fire damaged or hazard trees posing a threat to the public at large have now been felled. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that update this morning, Tina. California communities are making strides to combat the climate crisis through the implementation of new organic waste recycling and surplus food recovery programs. Deputy Director Zoe Heller is here now to highlight some CalRecycle developed resources to help our cities and our counties reduce landfill methane emissions. Good morning, Zoe. Good morning. Thank you, Linda. Food scraps, yard trimmings, paper, and other organic waste rotting in landfills is a top source of methane emissions in California. The climate super pollutant has 84 times the heat trapping ability of carbon dioxide. California passed SB 1383 in 2016 in an effort to fast track climate progress by reducing emissions of methane and other short lived climate super pollutants. The law requires jurisdictions to implement new programs to collect and recycle organic waste and develop programs to recover and redistribute surplus food to hungry families in their community. California continues to develop new resources and planning tools for all agencies and businesses impacted by these requirements to assist with implementation and to cut some costs to local jurisdictions. We have a jurisdiction web page with details on organic waste collection, including model franchise agreements. The page also breaks down education and outreach requirements and includes model, model signage in various languages. CalRecycle produced several edible food recovery tools, including capacity planning guidelines, a safe surplus food donation guide, and grant resources. 
We also have organics capacity planning tools and a procurement calculator tool that jurisdictions can use to help track the progress of their procurement requirements. CalRecycle has similar tools available for other entities, including food donors, food recovery organizations, transfer and processing facilities and landfills, organic recycling, organics recycling facilities, and local enforcement agencies. Soon we'll publish pages dedicated to waste haulers, local education agencies, and non-local entities. Please note, tools were developed by CalRecycle as a courtesy for informational and example purposes only. Use of these tools are optional and is not a regulatory requirement. We're constantly adding more tools and guidance, so make sure you're signed up for our SLCP listserv, where you can get all kinds of information on what's going on with 1383. Soon we'll publish a page with training videos and past webinar recordings. You can find all of these pages, tools, and resources by going to our short-lived Climate Pollutant page. Please continue to reach out to CalRecycle for any technical assistance regarding SB 1383. We're available for meetings and presentations and are always open to talking about new tools and resources that could be helpful for you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Zoe. Some great resources there. On to the grants and loans portion of the agenda. California's move toward a more circular remanufacturing economy requires producers to design products with their next life in mind. It also requires California to find new and innovative uses for the materials that we recycle. Deputy Director Matt Hennigan joins us with how CalRecycle is supporting those innovations for new products made from recycled waste tires. Good morning, Matt. Yeah, good morning. Thank you, Linda. Um, right, so we'll be talking about the, um, the feedstock conversion technical assistance and material testing contract. Uh, California manages roughly 51 million tires, uh, waste tires, every year. And that is the equivalent of over 17 and a half million. Uh, and, and we recycled 17 and a half million of those in 2020, um, which is a big number, but not enough. Um, so we continue to work on new ways to turn tires into valuable new products. One way that we do that is through technical support and research to help California businesses find new and innovative uses for tire-derived material. So today I'm announcing the approval of the scope of work of our latest feedstock conversion, technical assistance, and material testing services contract, uh, affectionately known as feedstock conversion here at CalRecycle, um, so that we can proceed with the solicitation process on that contract. Uh, the five-year tire plan allocates $500,000 for this contract over the next two fiscal years. Um, the services support California's market development efforts, which includes California's tire, in tire incentive program, which provides incentive payments to businesses that use recycled chrome rubber in products uh, or as a substitute for virgin rubber, virgin plastic, or other materials in, uh, in, in order to increase demand for chrome rubber. Um, the contract services include uh, providing technical assistance for eligible manufacturers who want to replace raw materials with recycled tire materials in order to make their products. Uh, it offers material testing services to ensure the quality of the crumb rubber feedstock meets the quality needs of the manufacturer. And it also supports uh, the industry through the application of um, ASTM standards and participating in the ASTM uh, writing process. Um, the most recent contract that we had um, helped CalRecycle identify and assist five new remanufacturing businesses and resulted in three first-time grantees for the Tire Incentive Program, uh, 12 new products made by replacing virgin rubber or plastic with recycled tire material, over 400 tests for those 12 new products to help um, you know, get those manufacturing processes dialed in. And three new, the three new grantees uh, in that uh, tire incentive program are expected to use the equivalent of 132,000 tires as feedstock in their products. Um, in response to the increased demand that this is creating, California tire, waste tire processors have increased crumb rubber production and have invested in additional equipment, which is exactly the type of growth in the recycling industry that we want to see. Um, that increased production helps support California's circular economy goals and keeps more tires from littering our communities and filling our landfill um, from one circular material into a circular economy. Uh, so moving right along uh, in the tire-derived uh, products arena, 
Uh, we're also announcing the latest awards for our Tire Derived Product Grant Program. This grant provides funding for public entities like cities, counties, schools, colleges, public agencies, qualifying Indian tribes, Native American tribes, um, and helps pay for tire-derived products like landscaping material, um, sidewalk pavers, um, and, and the, the things that you can see in this slide, um, traffic safety products, things like that. Uh, in addition to increasing the demand and supporting markets for retire, recycled tire products, this type of beneficial reuse cuts down on illegal dumping, illegal stockpiling, and the landfilling of tires by you know, generating that demand pull for the material. Uh, CalRecycle received five eligible applications, all of which use a minimum of 2,500 passenger tire equivalents of rubber. And you can see the breakdown uh, in the funding uh, uh, in the um, there's a link in the agenda, but the total funding equals just a, sh a, a hair under four hundred thousand dollars, and it is being divided among Imperial Beach, the city of Mendota, Needles, Shafter, and the San Bernardino City Unified School District. So, um, congratulations and welcome all those public entities to the world of tire derived materials. Um, and keeping with the tire theme. Uh, we are uh, also announcing our grantees for the Tire Amnesty Grant Program. So CalRecycle's Local Government Waste Tire Amnesty Grant Program helps fund local waste tire collection events for the public to drop off their old tires at no charge. Uh, normally, uh, tire disposal is associated with a fee that can be a disincentive to proper disposal and lead to illegal dumping. By waiving the fee at these amnesty events, we um, this is a much more efficient way to collect those tires than picking them up off the side of the road or cleaning up a, a illegal dumping site. Uh, since 2013, amnesty events supported by these grants have helped keep more than 1.8 million tires from being illegally dumped in our communities or watersheds. This grant cycle, Calvary Cycle, had $1.25 million in available funding for cities, counties, special districts, joint power authorities, and qualifying Native American tribes. Uh, of the 37 eligible applications received, 28 will be fully funded, and one will be partially funded in accordance with the approved eligibility and evaluation criteria that I'm sure we discussed at a prior monthly public meeting. Uh, the remaining applications will be awarded if additional funding becomes available, and that does often happen as we reallocate leftover funds towards the end of the fiscal year. Uh, you can read more about our Tire Amnesty Grant Program and our evaluation process in the request for approval that is linked in today's agenda. Um, we are also announcing grant awards to 59 local enforcement agencies to help carry out solid waste facilities permit and inspection programs. Uh, local enforcement agencies are certified by CalRecycle to act on the state's behalf to enforce laws and regulations related to solid waste handling and disposal. A core function of the LEA is to ensure the operation and closure of solid waste facilities uh, in a way that meets state standards and responding to public complaints about regulated facilities and operations. Uh, LEAs are among the first to engage when an operator seeks a new, revised, or modified solid waste facility permit, and LED, LEAs are also responsible for performing routine inspections of every activity, uh, every active, inactive, closing, closed, solid waste facility and operation in their jurisdiction. CalRecycle is awarding $1.4 million to these 59 hardworking LEAs. Each applicant receives a base grant of $15,000 plus an amount determined by the population of the LEA's jurisdiction and the number of active and permitted solid waste facilities located in that jurisdiction. Um, so that was a lot of grant activity and I want to let you know about additional upcoming grant opportunities so that um, those interested can uh, can start the application process. Um, applications for our tire incentive program are due on uh, on July 29th. This is, I believe, the one for manufacturers incentivizing them to use tire derived materials in their products. Um, the one we talked about earlier was for public agencies to purchase tire derived products. Um, applications to fund local road repair or replacement through our tire-derived aggregate program must be in by uh, August 18th, 
we talked about tire drive aggregate at a previous meeting. In fact, we had a great video about it, um, and I urge you um, jurisdictions, especially if there's lands, uh, landslide repair, but also uh, stormwater retention basins. Uh, if, if your jurisdiction's working on um, stormwater remediation, uh, this is a great technology, and um, and we can help pay for those projects. Um, and the farm and ranch cleanup uh, grants uh, to help clear and also prevent with you know fencing and cameras uh, illegal dumping on um, rural properties. Uh, those are those applications are due August 12th. You can find more information about all of these programs at calrecycle.ca.gov slash funding. And we look forward to your applications. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Matt, for all of those announcements and updates. As a reminder, if you'd like to submit a question or a comment on an agenda item, to please do so through the public comments portal. You can see the instructions on your screen there. Just a few steps from the CalRecycle homepage, select public meeting. In the text, click on public meeting portal. And then in the drop down menu, select monthly public meeting and make sure to include your name, email address and subject or agenda item. Also, please keep your submissions short and make sure to indicate which agenda item you are re uh, referring to so that we can direct them to the correct person during the public comment period coming up a little bit later. Now to our next agenda item, the recommended approval of a CalRecycle managed cleanup of an illegal disposal site in the city of Marysville, that's in Yuba County. CalRecycle's Solid Waste Disposal and Co-Disposal Site Cleanup Program assists with cleanups of illegal dump sites where the responsible party either cannot be identified or is unable or unwilling to pay for timely cleanups of sites that threaten public health or the environment. The cleanup projects are implemented through CalRecycle managed contracts, grants, and loans. Applications for the cleanup project grants open on August 25th and are due by September 29th. Deputy Director Mark DeBee joins us now with some more on this latest remediation project. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, thank you, Linda. Um, so in, in addition to the grants you mentioned, um, the program, as you indicated, does also um, assist local government with contractor support in cleaning up illegal dump sites. So at the request of local government and the local enforcement agency, CalRecycle completed an evaluation of the abandoned Hollywood Trailer Park site, which is located between the Marysville Levee and the Yuba River floodplain. Uh, through this evaluation, staff was able to determine that the site was eligible and has recommended approval of a CalRecycle managed remediation for the Hollywood Trailer Park illegal disposal site. The site includes two properties. One is owned by a private property owner and the other is owned by the city of Marysville. The proposed cleanup project will only include the city of Marysville property, which is approximately 20 acres and makes up most of the site. Since the mobile home park was abandoned over a decade ago, it's been an area of recurring uh, illegal dumping at the level similar to what staff find at large illegal disposal sites. There was a fire at the site in October 2020 that burned much of the site, over 30 acres, which included all of the city property. The city of Marysville, along with a nonprofit, Say Love, cleared 20 dumpsters of burn waste, including furniture, appliances, vehicles, and household hazardous waste. The city spent over $30,000 on the cleanup and patrols of the area and has now exhausted their available resources to complete the re remediation of the rest of the park. The city and the county local enforcement agency requested assistance of CalRecycle to complete the removal of the remaining solid waste, which consists primarily of smaller, widely scattered materials. The city-owned portion of the site lies on the floodplain of the Yuba River with burned waste as close as 30 feet from the river. The program's cleanup contractor will remove and safely dispose or recycle the remaining material. And after cleanup, the city plans to install barriers, signage, and continue patrols to prevent future illegal dumping. The preliminary cost estimate for the CalRecycle managed cleanup is approximately $105,000.
The funding will come out of the Solid Waste Disposal Trust Fund in the program's Northern California Remediation Contract, which is number DRR19050. The project meets criteria to receive a cost recovery waiver. And we hope the project to begin as early as the first week in August. I will now move into an overview of solid waste tire, waste tire permits as well as waivers. It should be noted that these permits for solid waste um, are issued by the Solid Waste Local Enforcement Agency. Cal Recycle's role is to ensure that permits are consistent with state requirements. The permits can only address areas within the authority and responsibility of the local enforcement agency and Cal Recycle. And for more information, you can go to the link on this slide. Regarding waste tire permits, they are processed and issued entirely by Cal Recycle. The permits include requirements to ensure that tires can be stored and processed in a manner that reduces potential threat from fire and disease carrying vectors. Again, for more information, see the link on the slide. And then relative to emergency waivers, they only allow changes to operations at solid waste facilities needed to respond to an emergency. Local enforcement agencies may approve waivers and Cal Recycle has the responsibility in reviewing the waivers and address any potential issues. And again, for more information, see the link on the slide. Um, Paulina Lawrence usually go, goes through an update on permits, but she's out today, so it falls to me and uh, to go through what is the current workload at Cal Recycle regarding permits. Before I get to the new permits, I just wanted to recap um, some of the permits that have recently been processed by um, Cal Recycle and sent back to the LEA for issuance. These include the Shoshone Landfill Permit, the um, uh, Republic Services Post Collection Facility in Salinas, the Palomar Transfer Station, the um, City of Berkeley Solid Waste Management Center and Transfer Station, the Olinda Alpha Landfill, as well as the forward landfill. I will note that all of those uh, actions were taken prior to the statutory and regulatory deadline to have them completed. So good going um, on the permanent staff in keeping those processes moving and moving in a timely way. Um, the new items that uh, show up on the agenda are um, one is for a modified solid waste facility permit for the Golden Bear Waste Recycling Center, which is located at the foot of Parr Boulevard in Richmond, California, in Contra Costa County. The uh, review of the permit package that we received indicates that um, the permit will be removing a requirement for self-monitoring. Uh, it's going to correct some typographical errors and the supporting report of facility information will be updated. There is a, a new solid waste facility permit um, in front of Cal Recycle for action, and that is for the Athens Irwindale Material Recovery Facility and Transfer Station. It's located at 2200 Arrow Highway in Irwindale, California, Los Angeles County. And action is required on this permit by August 24. The review of the permit package indicates that the new facility will have these general design parameters. It will be a large volume transfer station and it will receive municipal solid waste, green material, and construction and demolition inert debris. It will operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for the receipt of waste and other operations. It will, however, only be open to the public Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Saturday, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then Sunday hours will be 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
it will have a permitted maximum tonnage of 6,000 tons per day, and there will be an allowance for 2,801 vehicles to enter the facility each day. It will have a permitted overall area of 17.22 acres. I wanted to also mention that uh, since this agenda was posted, we received an application um, from the operator for the John Smith Road landfill in uh, San Benito County. CalRecycle is the enforcement agency for that county, and so we will be processing that application and making decisions relative to the permit. Our initial review is that the request from the operator in the application is to increase the design capacity for the site from what is currently designed at 9.343, excuse me, 9.354 million cubic yards to 9.797 million cubic yards. Um, there is a time frame for us to review and process that application and take action on those permits. And we will be posting our uh, process on the website so people can uh, track the progress um, for that uh, request. Um, I'm happy to uh, indicate today that there are no new waivers. Um, and I'm happy because that would indicate that solid waste facilities that have required waivers to deal with debris coming in as a result of emergency has greatly decreased. So um, uh, as Tina indicated, there is a winding down of debris uh, removal activities and a corresponding re reduction in the request for waivers. And that is my report today. Thank you very much. Back to you, Linda. Thank you so much, Mark. California communities are working hard to reduce their landfill disposal and emissions from climate super pollutants that come from rotting food, yard waste, paper, and other organic material. CalRecycle is responsible for overseeing how well jurisdictions are implementing programs to accomplish those goals, including the 2014 Mandatory Commercial Organics Recycling Law, also known as AB 1826. Staff does this by conducting site visits, analyzing documentation, and through reviews of jurisdictions' annual reports, which include disposal information and self-assessments of their programs. CalRecycle conducts more intensive jurisdictional reviews every two or four years, depending on the jurisdiction's past performance. The department also has the authority to conduct anytime reviews to make sure that cities and counties are in compliance with mandatory commercial organics recycling requirements. Deputy Director Matt Hedigan is back with results of CalRecycle's latest compliance investigations. Matt? All right. Thank you, Linda. Uh, California's mandatory commercial organics recycling law says that any business that generates at least two cubic yards of solid waste per week must recycle their organic waste. Jurisdictions are responsible for ensuring compliance in their communities. Staff uses criteria described in the Countywide Integrated Waste Management Plan Enforcement Policy, Part 2, to determine the extent to which a jurisdiction has implemented or shown a good faith effort to implement its selected programs. They conduct on, our staff conducts on-site and virtual site visits. They, we review annual reports, we review hauler data, and the outreach materials that are being used by the jurisdictions. Local assistance and market development staff identified implementation gaps for programs in the three jurisdictions described in the uh, RFA that's attached to the agenda. Those jurisdictions are Brentwood, Indio, and Lemon Grove. Uh, among those three, the most common gaps included high levels of non-compliance from the, the affected businesses and ineffective annual follow-up from the jurisdictions to all of the businesses that were not recycling their organic waste. Uh, CalRecycle meets regularly with each jurisdiction in California to monitor their progress and provide compliance assist assistance when gaps are discovered, uh, and that assistance can include uh, providing it feedback on program implementation, reviewing educational materials that are used by the jurisdiction, providing tools and other resources, and also through peer matching by, by putting jurisdictions 
that are struggling with jurisdictions that are doing well and, and um, facilitating a lessons learned process there. Um, you can find a summary of the, the identified program gaps and an overview of how each jurisdiction plans to address these gaps linked to today's agenda. And some of those local, locally identified solutions include better identif identifying businesses who fall under the recycling requirement, uh, enacting local ordinance updates requiring mandatory service or a contamination fee schedule, uh, and the establishment of an exemption process. Um, it's possible that some of the non-participation is due to businesses that really are exempt but um, haven't been through an official exemption process. Um, if these three jurisdictions do not make adequate progress on implementing the plans that they submitted to CalRecycle uh, and the, the, the organic recycling program gaps persist, then they will be referred to our jurisdiction compliance unit for further investigation. This item is delegated to me, and I want to thank our program staff um, for, for developing, the, for doing this work, and also thank the jurisdiction staff for crafting these plans and working so hard on their implementation. So thank you to CalRecycle and to the three jurisdictions uh, identified for, um, for identifying solutions and, and moving forward with implementation. Uh, our next item is uh, is a countywide integrated ma waste management plan review. CalRecycle is required to review and approve or disapprove each countywide or regional agency integrated waste management plan five-year review report. Ventura County submitted a five-year review report that concludes that no revisions to the planning documents are necessary at this time and our staff has concurred with that. Uh, that decision is delegated to Branch Chief Chair Kara Morgan, and she has approved it. You can find more detailed information on all of these agenda items by visiting the CalRecycle homepage, clicking public meetings, then clicking on to, uh, date, today's date and downloading the meeting agenda. In that downloaded agenda, there are blue links to all the documents we're talking about. Um, I also do want to announce uh, that uh, we're making an appointment to the Carpet Stewardship uh, Advisory Committee, the Carpet Advisory Committee. Um, California's Carpet Stewardship Law requires that the Director of CalRecycle report, uh, appoint members of the Carpet Advisory Committee. Um, when there was a vacancy from a representative of the environmental community, CalRecycle solicited applications for a new representative of the environmental community. We received a number of very strong applications, and I want to thank all of the applicants for their willingness to devote their energy, uncompensated, uh, to the advisory committee. Um, after a thorough scoring process, staff made a recommendation to the director, which she has accepted, uh, to appoint Dr. Suna Bayrakal, the director of policy and programs for the Product Stewardship Institute to the Carpet Advisory, uh, appoint her to the Carpet Advisory Committee. Dr. Bayrakal uh, brings extensive experience in EPR programs, uh, EPR generally and carpet EPR specifically. Um, she describes herself as a policy analyst and researcher with an engineering background. She uh, developed PSI's Elements of an Effective Carpet EPR Program document as well as a how-to guide on carpet stewardship programs. Um, she has researched uh, producer responsibility policies uh, for carpet, mattress, tires, pesticides, household hazardous waste, mercury containing products, batteries, and so has broad knowledge of the EPR landscape. Um, she holds a, a doctorate degree um, and her, uh, and, she, right, she holds a PhD from uh, York University in Toronto a, and a master's in environmental engineering from Iowa State University. And so we, uh, we welcome uh, Dr. Bayrakal to the advisory committee. And I believe that is the end of my updates. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Matt. Moving along to our final agenda item. CalRecycle careers. Could a career at CalRecycle be your calling? The department has a number of positions on the Cal Careers website that are now accepting application. And uh, here's what employees say are the benefits to working at CalRecycle. Looking for a career that gives you a sense of purpose? 
the kind of work you do is a lot more meaningful since you're actually helping people like recover and rebuild from something so traumatic. Want to make a difference for the environment? Cal Recycle's mission to protect the environment and public health, that aligned with my core values. Cal Recycle needs your passion and drive to build a brighter future with less pollution and more green jobs. It's it's been a really great experience getting to work with so many different like-minded people who are all working to protect the environment, to decrease our waste, to increase recycling, and to source reduce. Join the team that's taking on the climate crisis, reducing climate sleeper pollutants from rotting food and yard waste. Diverting waste from landfills is one step towards uh, reducing climate change. Providing 115 million meals to hungry Californians through surplus food recovery and managing the cleanup from climate disasters. We go down to different areas that have been impacted by wildfires and we actually conduct debris removal on all the properties that have burned down uh, within that area. We're helping a homeowner who lost everything build and recover from such a traumatic experience. Join the team that's fueling a new circular remanufacturing economy. Fighting trash pollution by giving old products new life with programs that help California reuse or recycle over 426 billion bottles and cans, 15.6 million gallons of paint, 7 million mattresses, and about 264 million tires. I really enjoy working here at Cal Recycle because I get to do what I love. I'm communicating with the public. I'm providing them with resources that will improve the environment and overall public health. Join the team that's keeping dangerous waste from contaminating our most vulnerable communities with programs to safely manage 2.5 billion pounds of old electronics, 2.2 billion gallons of used oil, and over 1.5 billion pounds of household hazardous waste. I really wanted to work for the government because I've always heard that law and policy is one of the best ways to make change. We need innovative, forward-thinking team members committed to our environmental mission. At CalRecycle, it's more than just a job. I get great benefits. I have medical, a retirement plan, and a flexible schedule. It's your opportunity to help save the planet. If you're looking for a challenge, if you're looking for great career development, I highly recommend CalRecycle. Take advantage of the opportunities and apply now. And right now there are positions in environmental science, information technology, and civil engineering, just to name a few of those. Um, there are many benefit benefits to working for the state for a complete list of open positions and for application deadlines. Make sure to visit calcareers.ca.gov. All Cal Recycle civil service job openings are listed under Department of Resources, Recycling, and Recovery. You can also find this video as well as some of the others that have played throughout um, this morning on our Cal Recycle YouTube page. Before we open up to the public, um, to public comments, we'd also like to remind every, everyone this morning that you can find more information on each of the agenda items that we discussed today by visiting the Cal Recycle homepage, selecting public meetings, and then clicking on today's date to download the meeting agenda. That's where you can also find more in-depth information on today's items, as well as links and contact information should you have any questions on any of, um, any of the items. We are working to make the process easier for you, but this is how you can access that information for the time being. Now let's address the public comments. I know that Ken and Zoe have been monitoring the public comment portal this morning, so we're gonna bring them back in to take your questions and comments. Ken and Zoe. Thank you, Linda. I uh, appreciate that um, handoff, and thank you for, for hosting and, and facilitating the meeting this morning. So uh, we're going to endeavor to take these in the order in which they appeared uh, in the agenda. Uh, the first that I will respond to um, is from Veronica Pardo in regard to the uh, beverage container recycling pilot projects. Um, Veronica asks the question, is the video presented available online? And I believe that uh, Linda just um, made reference to that, so your question is a timely one. Uh, yes, they will be available via our, our YouTube channel, so thank you for asking that question. I'm going to take the next one, which is from Christina Hansen with Placer County. 
For the mobile pilot program, different locations on different days, I'm curious what, if any, permit requirements there were to locate the mobile collection at a site. Christina, um, permitting requirements may vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and I think um, probably the best way to kind of um, discuss this question is uh, if you could reach out to us, we also have your uh, email address here, we can, we can reach out, and maybe we can kind of sit down and understand um, some of the permit questions that you're asking about. We can um, show you kind of other applications and how those were handled, but each county, each jurisdiction may have some different requirements. So um, I think it would be important to kind of drill down a little bit on what you mean, and we can sort that out. So you can reach out to Jennifer Akins, jennifer.akins at calrecycle.ca.gov. You'll also find more information about the pilot projects on our website under the Beverage Container Recycling Program. And you can, of course, reach out to me, ken.derosa, D-A, ROSA at calrecycle.ca.gov, and we can have a, a conversation about this. And that applies to anyone out there who's listening who may also be interested in the pilot projects. Please reach out to us. We're uh, available to answer questions that you might have and talk through concepts that you may be considering. Thank you. Ken, I can go ahead and take the next comment um, on 1383. Sure. I was going to read it, and then maybe if you wanted to respond, um, but please go right ahead. Either way, okay. Um, I'll read it. You respond because it's it's Perfect. a bit wordy, and um, I'm I'm ready to to. <laughs> so this is from Evan Edgar uh, regarding SB 1383. Just under a decade is all that remains to stop irreversible damage to the Earth from climate change. This was concluded in the 2019 report issued by the UN Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, with the next report due in 2022, which will be more daunting. According to distinguished scientists, the only lever we have left to bend the warming curve is to reduce short-lived climate pollution, such as methane, black carbon, tropospheric ozone, and HFCs. We need to focus on near-term solutions now to reserve, reserve <coughs> excuse me, reduce short-lived climate pollutants by 2030 and not defer tough choices today for some electrified carbon neutral future by 2045. The implementation of SB 1383 plans to reduce methane by 40% in 2030. With a sense of urgency, Governor Newsom doubled down on July 9th and requested CARB to evaluate pathways for the state to achieve carbon neutrality by 2035 and stepping up the state's, um, uh, excuse me, I lost my place, state's pace in achieving zero carbon electricity to 2030. Sinking the timeframes will force CARB to honestly model 2030 targets and utilize existing cost-effective programs, compose, compost and NRG programs that are carbon negative and carbon neutral now. 2021 annual report to the legislature on California climate investments using cap and trade auction reduction costs per ton where CalRecycle programs that reduce short-lived climate pollutants are just 10 to $55 per ton to make compost and renewable natural gas. Scoping plan third update will focus on carbon sequestration with compost use on natural and working lands where January 2019 draft California 2030 natural working lands, oops, I'm sorry, I lost my place, where January 2019 draft California 2030 Natural and Working Lands Climate Change Implementation Plan is to double the compost and mulch use by 2030. Edgar and Associates prepared the Net Zero Greenhouse Gas Report for the waste sector that shows that in 2018, the waste sector avoided 3.7 times their greenhouse gases, and by 2030, the waste sector could avoid 9.9 .9 times their emissions. We look forward to working with CalRecycle staff on understanding the circular economy of the waste sector and be fully engaged with the AB32 scoping plan third update and facilitate adding SB1383 programs to reduce short-lived climate pollutants into the scoping plan process. According to new research, soil could act as a huge carbon sink to help balance out greenhouse gases with holding up to three times as much carbon as is found in the atmosphere. If we can tap into potential to sequester more carbon, dirt could save the earth. Bending the climate curve requires a focus on SB 1383 and short-lived climate pollutant mitigation programs. CARB needs to sync 2030 goals and modeling with the natural and working lands carbon sink in order to delay catastrophic climate change. I will catch my breath. Zoe, if you would, wouldn't mind responding. Sure. Evan, thanks so much for that comment, and thanks also for sharing with us the um, Net Zero Greenhouse Gas Report. Um, appreciate your engagement on this issue and want to acknowledge that you had asked the question at the last public meeting as to how we are working with ARB on the um, upcoming scoping plan. And, you know, per the one Cal EPA vision, we're, um, you know, coordinating closely with, with ARB staff and ensuring that 
that, you know, CalRecycle's thoughts on this issue through our implementation of 1383 and other mandates that combat climate change that were aligned in, in, um, in moving this, this forward. So thank you for your comments, appreciate your engagement, and I'm always happy to chat with you more if, if that would be helpful. Very good. Yes, thank you, Evan. Really appreciate it. Um, as always, uh, thoughtful comments. Going to move now to um, an item under the solid waste cleanup grant opportunities. Matt, uh, this question, for the tire and solid waste cleanup grant opportunities, will these grant programs cover cleanup in the public right of way as well as conservation areas within urban areas? Will the conservation of the public right of way within floodplains be included as well? This is from Annika Anderson uh, from the city of Oceanside. Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Um, the farm and ranch uh, cleanup program specifically is targeted at um, agricultural and, and rural zoned private property. Uh, that's my understanding. I believe we have other uh, illegal dumping cleanup grants, uh, as well as providing funding to the local conservation corps who can provide assistance, you know, public uh, uh, cow recycle funded or partially cost offset. Um, cleanup assistance for the public right of way and uh, and the uh, and and watersheds. So um, I'll I'll have to get back to you on the specifics of which programs might be available for public right of way, um, uh, and look forward to engaging with you on that. Thank you for the question. Oh, Mark, do you have a program? Mark, you're muted. Thank you, Ken. Yes, I was muted. So I just wanted to add to what uh, Matt was saying in, in um, today, the agenda item mentioned cleanup grants, um, some of which are coming out of the trust fund that we administer. Um, and certainly that money can be used to clean up on um, public right of ways and in these conservation areas. Um, as Matt's indicating, there's um, a number of programs that could be available. Um, I would recommend um, consulting with CalRecycle on which programs might be most applicable um, uh, in terms of the grant program. And then also, um, if it's not eligible for a grant program, um, but it meets the eligibility for a department cleanup, uh, that's an option too. So I would strongly recommend um, uh, consulting with um, CalRecycle, certainly start with Matt, but um, uh, we can also uh, offer some assistance too. Thank you. And, and you know, I stand corrected. Uh, the Farm and Ranch Program, public lands and right-of-ways are eligible. So I apologize for not, uh, not having an exhaustive understanding of that program, but um, uh, we definitely have program experts who we can put you in touch with to walk you through the application process. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I see one more question. This is from Steve Krause with CRM Rubber. Uh, how much money has been spent on the feedstock conversion technical assistance and material contract since its origin in 2019? What are the measurables to determine the success of this contract? How has this contract performed in relation to the goals laid out from the start of the program? How many recycled tires can be attributed to this program? Uh, Steve, thank you for the question. Uh, this fell under the uh, Feedstock Conversion Technical Assistance and Material Testing Services contract item. I'm going to turn to Matt Hennigan. I will note, uh, Steve, there are a number of uh, detailed uh, metrics that you're looking for, and I don't know that we may have those at the ready, but we will um, definitely follow up with you um, on this. But I'll turn to Matt if he has anything um, immediate that, uh, that can be shared. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, putting the the comments in the portal allows us a few minutes to gather some statistics, and so I do have a partial answer ready for Steve, but we'll follow up with the rest. Um, your your question was, you know, how much has been spent on these contracts since uh, their origin? Um, the contract originally started in 2015. Uh, the first was for 750 thousand, and the second was for one million. So we spent one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. And you're asking about the measurable, uh, measurable you know, outcomes to determine success. 
And really the success of these contracts is whether the deliverables outlined in the scope of work are in fact delivered and we have had good success uh, in, in, in having the contractor meet those deliverables, um, providing assistance to tire derived product manufacturers, um, implement these conversion, uh, feedstock conversion processes, subbing out um, virgin material for tire derived uh, uh, products. Um, in terms of the number of tires attributed, um, I've, I've just got the statistics from that second round, um, uh, but at, at, at which, which we mentioned in the, um, in the presentation, the, the, the grantees who were assisted will use that assistance and those tire funds to recycle 132,000 tires uh, into new products. Um, that's for just the, the second contract. I don't have that first contract handy. Um, but in short, this is one part of many uh, tire programs that we have going to build markets for waste tires uh, so that they become you know, too valuable to landfill or legally dispose. Um, right, we, and we, we saw the tire derived aggregate was just discussed today. So um, it's one piece of a constellation of programs we have uh, for tires. Uh, thanks for your question. Very good. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm looking at the portal. I, I, I don't see anything additional, Zoe. Am, am I not reading this um, accurately? That's all I see as well, Ken. Okay. Very good. Uh, something just came oh. in. Oh, it's literally. Certainly. My apologies, my screen seems to be a little, um, may I trouble you to read that please? I'm sorry. Gladly. Okay, so this is from Joseph Mandel um, from the California Coalition for CR CRV Reform. Good morning, I am Joe Mandel, the organizer of CCFCR. I watched your meeting today and I have some comments. Coincidentally, I have a phone meeting with an attorney for the legislation to draw up an initiative to stop CRV because of the inability and lack of, con oh, Oh, here it is. Sorry about that. Um, coinc coincidentally, I have a phone meeting with an attorney for the legislation to drop an initiative to stop CRV because of the inability and lack of convenience to redeem the money California has been largely gathering for the last four years. I find it unfair that we're being charged extra money, five cents on beverage containers and 10 cents on gallon water containers, especially when Replanet closed all its locations four years ago. We had nowhere to recycle, for the redemption value. California continued to take our money when it should have stopped. In my town of Fremont, a population of approximately 300,000 people, there has been no place in store or out of store to redeem that money. I recycle my bottles and cans by driving 11 miles to Union City and have waited in the long line of cars. Gas for my truck, my time and frustration is not worth the $5 or $20 I get in return. The majority of people do not redeem their beverage containers, but they give it back to the city in the green recycle on trash day, or they throw them in the trash. The people are being ripped off. Although your meeting was encouraging, you are building new buildings instead of bringing back recycling to the grocery store industry. Over the last four years, CalRecycle did not fix the problem. I do like the pilot projects, but it's a little too late. Um, and you started and you stated it could take years to have these programs running. What are you doing for CRV in Fremont? Because in the charts, Fremont was not mentioned. I want the extra beverage charges stopped until CalRecycle brings back recycling centers or makes it more convenient like the Irvine door-to-door -door program. I think it is a fantastic idea. I'll speak, I'll be speaking with the Deputy Legislative Council at 1 p.m. today regarding the wording for my initiative. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mandel, thank you for your comments. I understand your frustration. I think the point that was made this morning is that these pilot projects are an, are an opportunity to expand and consider new ways of redemption. And our hope is that with their success, uh, we can apply these models in communities across the state, large, small, medium. Um, so I appreciate your comments um, and we will, uh, we will endeavor to make and work with local jurisdictions to make these pilot projects as successful as possible. Thank you for that. I see that we have one more, Zoe, that arrived. Yeah. Uh, 
I can go ahead and take it. It's oh, um, thank it's you. Um, yeah. Please. Um, if you don't so mind. This, this next comment is from um, City of Oceanside, Colleen Foster. SB 1383 is going to drive bioenergy systems and RNG transportation opportunities. However, the governor's office is calling for 100% of electrification of all vehicles within the next 15 years. How will CalRecycle work with CARB to reconcile, reconcile bioenergy opportunities for collection systems given electrification is not yet feasible for major collection transportation opportunities? You know, Colleen, thanks so much for this comment. Appreciate it. Um, and, you know, we've heard this comment, similar comments in, in um, other public meetings and forums. And we are working closely with CARB to ensure that you know, the goals of 1383 um, and the organic waste products that will be developed as a result um, can align with our shared visions to, you know, reduce greenhouse gas emissions overall. And um, we understand that there's urgency in meeting a number of these different goals, and um, we are doing our best to align our systems to ensure that we are able to embrace, um, you know, our mandates and the products that come out of our mandates with the overall go goals of the administration. So thank you for that comment. And, also happy to chat more on this issue. Thank you, Zoe, and thank you, Colleen, for your for your comment. Uh, Linda, um, at this point, we do not see anything more in the portal, so um, we will turn it back to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for all of the questions and also for the thoughtful and thorough answers. And thanks to everyone who participated in the public meeting today. Also want to thank Public Information Officer Lance Klug, who put a lot of the information together in a PowerPoint presentation to make the information more accessible. We hope that you enjoy the new format designed to make communication accessible, inclusive, and as relevant as possible. We welcome your feedback. Feel free to leave us a comment on the public comment portal. In the meantime, have a great rest of your morning and rest of your week, and we'll see you next month. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>